running the revs high and definitely making the rear end dance through those fast corners is the Radical. Let's see what they can do with a little slipstream assistance or assistance from a helping of oversteer for the Porsche. And that is the change for the GT3 lead right there. Radical leads the way. Incredible stuff. But be gentle. The Porsche makes their way back past on the way down the straight. That is quite interesting to see there. Looking at the, oh, easy, easy, oh, goodness gracious. Very late on the brakes there was the Limpet Arch and DC Racing car. And then, oh, okay. Seems a little bit of uh, internet uh, messing around there. The BMW briefly in front and trying under brakes here at Lacombe. Looks like the Glickenhaus has uh, overshot, and oh, they just about make contact. This is very close for the start of a three-hour race. The BMW is not giving up, neither is the Glickenhaus. Side by side on the way to Bruxelles. This is giving a huge advantage to the Mika and Seth BMW just behind. All that side by side running has cost those guys about, oh, what, what is it, half a second in terms of time? Unfortunately, the Mika Seth entry running wide at Jackie X corner is not going to help their car. Looks like a bit of a slipstream coming on here for the BMW in fourth and the Porsche not harassing the Radical all that much. And the LMP1 leaders are just coming through now. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody. Don't want anything going wrong here. That was a little bit awkward there for RGB Parrot. And oh no, the LMP1's going through has completely changed the face of that battle. Nihuis and Schnitzelbalmer smacking into the back of Christoph Chesilski right there. And that has cost them massively. They have both lost, uh, both lost the position to uh, multi-hinch, minimal real damage. So they continue on and get past the Glickenhaus properly and cleanly this time. Flicking our attention back to TCR. Have a look at this. Oh, so close. Look at that. Is that a pass for the lead around the outside of Lacombe? That is magnificent. Sven Versteek has managed to get his way. BMW has had a better exit than the Radical. Could this be a move for the GT3 lead? Pulls out of the slipstream. Let's see how late they get on the brakes. They almost draw level in the braking zone. The Radical is later on the brakes and that screwed them unfortunately. Just overrun and makes contact with the BMW as well. The Limpet Arch DC Racing entry spins as a result of that contact. Appear in the frame. Um, we see that uh, Mika, Seth, and Milan, Luca, the two BMWs, is, oh dear. I was looking away from the production feed at exactly the right time there. That's the Porsche making its way past the Glickenhaus. Really good outbreaking move there by Captain Foxy and Big Boy Dan. But let's see if the multi Hinch and Pie entry can make their way back through. No, they can definitely make their way off the track, though. That was a good save there. Fifth place in GT3 at the moment. They do have a bit of time to make up though. Looking quite close here. Oh, that is big contact there. It looks to me like that is the uh, Captain Foxy and Big Boy Dan entry. That is just that just unfortunately I think went a bit too deep in La Source. Look briefly at the sister car, which is leading the GT3 class, and of course. At that very corner there, had a bit of a coming together with uh, the Radical. And yes, that is indeed a tyre. Um... <laughs> and some big news for the TCR third place battle. It looks like Samuel McGill has managed to do it. We'll see how this battle eventuates though first for second in GT3. 
Inside line for the Radical at Bruxelles. It's a descending corner. You can't afford to go in here too hard, side by side. And Dan has to yield at the exit. I believe um, Has a Walker is now at the wheel of the Audi TCR car. Got some traffic in their own class, it seems here. No, actually, it's all for position. My goodness. So, Captain Foxy and Big Boy Dan, they are right in the midst of this fight too. Side by side with Milan and Luca, but hard on the brakes through Blanchimont. That's going to make things difficult. Oh, no. They've spun. Big contact from behind. Jeffrey and Grocky Crocky uh, ran right into the back of them. And I can't say I blame them. The Jeffrey and Grocky Crocky evidently has, though. They've just given them a drive-through penalty for that incident. And I mean, I... Uh, I'm because there's a really long straight line section here. Uh, once again, too deep for Cecilski. But the Radical stays behind. They know that they've got a very long straight coming up. They can take advantage of the slipstream there. Let's see what it's like for the Radical through Arouge and Radion. They don't even lift. That's amazing. The Radical doesn't lift through Arouge and Radion. And they draw alongside. It's going to be outside line here. Coming into Lacombe. Will they be able to do it? Cecilski is on the brakes at the exact same time and tries his best. But harder into the corner there for the Radical. They are through. The roles have been reversed. Now the Radical has the uh, inside. And pushes it. Even though you know Christoph had the run and was ahead when they got to the braking zone. But the car driven by Milan and Luca. They're probably thinking, well, what do we do at this stage? Lack of straight line speed evident. And Kristoff goes for it in the braking zone around the outside. Can he hold it? Oh, he almost did. The cars make contact and now they're side by side on the exit of the bus stop chicane. It's gotten a tiny bit ugly in this fight. The Porsche now not a part of the picture. Kristoff hard on the brakes into La Source, trying to hold it, but the Radical reigns supreme once again on the exit, but Christoph has gotten a slightly better run out of the corner. Don't go side by side into Eau Rouge, boys. This could get ugly very quickly. Oh. Christoph doing the very mindful thing, getting on the brakes. Clearing was Captain Foxy and Big Boy Dan, and now they've also had to let through the LMP1 leader, and they're having to make their way past the Cobby and Roka Scree Audi as well. Here comes Kristoff, around the outside, Defanye gives just enough room to Milan and Luca, and not an inch more as they make their way through the corner, and the Ferrari is through. This is crazy. 132 seconds stop and go for swap time. They didn't complete the procedure correctly. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that <laughs> in the dust for a second, though, because the Radical is leaving the Ferrari in the dust. With a great exit from Arouge and Radion. But attempting a pass at Blanchemont might be ill-advised here. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Forces the Radical to take the narrow line into Blanchimont and ruin the exit. But defensive from the Radical on the brakes. Who will come off the best here? More room given this time. And the Ferrari is through once more. But the Radical gets a better exit out of the bus stop chicane. How good is this? Maybe the tires are going off, who knows? But more slipstream. And is the Ferrari lifting a little there? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Hard on the brakes for the Radical. And round the outside into Lacombe. They are through once again. RGB Parrot is on the soft tire. Gross Jean is on the medium. The soft tire is quicker, but it won't last as long. 
So, is RGB Parrot in tire saving mode at the moment? Did he absolutely slam it to get back into the lead and is now just managing the gap? They have a GT3 car to negotiate. That is the uh, Cobby and Rockus driven Audi there. Oh no! Oh, very wide at Lacan. Both of our LMP1 leaders go off and they hold position, amazingly enough. But here we go. Here's the defense. Oh, side by side. RGB Parrot has to hold the inside. The soft tire working in his favor there. Gross Jean can do nothing to hold it around the outside. But don't go defensive there. Did he just let him through? I don't know. Dumps the hybrid and goes straight back past. Are they putting on a show for us, I wonder? It really is amazing to see, like, you know, the, the, the amount of power that the hybrid system gives these cars. Look at that. Look at that. That is Gross Gene on the hybrid. And he's going for it. But then, a slight response from RGB Parrot. The leaders go side by side through a Rouge and Radion. Don't usually want to do that, but they made it work. I'm right on the back now. RGB Parrot has got to be careful here with Gross Jean almost making contact with him in the braking zone. Side by side through Lacombe. Oh, that was so close to making contact. They're playing a dangerous game here. If the two teammates make contact. So now the gap for the lead is 10.6 seconds. Let's see what we can do. 9.5, 9.4. Now RGB Parrot and Gross Gene are both on the soft tires. So they will be driving the wheels off those cars and Gross Gene will be driving the car straight into the barrier. RGB Parrot, my apologies. Oh no. There we go. Gross Gene moves back into the lead of the race. It has all gone off here right at the end. We have less than a minute to go. 45 seconds and oh, it's all gone wrong again for Parrot. What on earth has happened to the number one right at the end?